a hulking behemoth abandoned for eight years. Its skeleton rusting between the fierce sun and some of the saltiest seawater in the world. In its hull, over a million barrels of crude oil. A time bomb ticking, threatening unprecedented environmental devastation. It was quite amazing pulling up to the FSO Sopper for the first time. I had not seen it uh, before. Is a monster of a boat. It's huge, uh, almost 400 meters long. It was like seeing an underwater wreck, but above water in, in, in many ways. Owned by Yemen's national energy company, the FSO Safar became collateral damage in the country's grinding civil war, one that has claimed thousands of lives and destroyed industry. But anchored five miles out at sea, in perhaps more Pacific territory, the Safar wasn't completely abandoned. It was left with a very small skeleton crew, maybe six crew members, that, that stayed on board the whole time of, of the war. In 2020, there was actually a, a flooding of the engine room that could have brought the Safar down uh, at that time. But they, they sounded the alarm and, and some local divers did come in to put patches below water um, and, and sealed it off so it wouldn't sink. Uh, so that was actually very heroic and nobody knows about it, really. Since 2015, anxiety began building that a failure to fund an operation could result, whether by leak or explosion, in potentially history's worst oil spill, into the Red Sea's emerald waters, home to some of the world's richest coral reefs, devastating local livelihoods and blocking the key artery of food imports to the north of Yemen. The fishing industry will be stopped. The uh, seaports will be locked, you know, uh, no ships, commercial ships can go there and uh, especially for the food supply will be stopped. We calculated over 200,000 families would be uh, affected, losing their livelihood, uh, probably for a generation, uh, 25 years. The cleanup would have cost $20 billion. That's the best estimate that we received. In 1989, the Exxon Valdez spill leaked hundreds of thousands of gallons of crude into the Gulf of Alaska, a slick that covered over a thousand miles of coastline. Even now, pockets of oil are still being discovered. Yet on Yemen's FSO Safar, four times as much oil. This is big. Uh, how, and I looked at the first price tag, I thought, how are we going to raise $144 million? In the end, after two years and between 23 countries, private companies and even the general public, enough funds were raised to launch an operation to transfer the oil. An elementary school in Bethesda, Maryland, kids in, in uh, six, seven, eight years old heard about this and went out and raised money. They sold lemonade or whatever uh, they could to, to raise a few hundred dollars for us. This is a good news story, a disaster averted, and I shouldn't dampen the mood. Some big energy companies did put their hands in the pocket, as did Yemen's Red Sea neighbour, Saudi Arabia. But it has to be said, it seems absurd to hold a slow whip round involving school children in America, knowing the billions in profits made by energy companies who've worked in Yemen and the hundreds of millions of dollars thrown around in sports deals in Saudi Arabia. So yes, this is a good news story, but it's also a reminder of what our priorities are, how organised we can be when it comes to profiting from natural resources and how absent we can be when it comes to protecting them. The oil has been transferred, but the story now continues, with the UN again sending round the collection plate for a last $20 million to safely break up the boat. But in Yemen, relief and time for cheer. They are very happy and they celebrate and they thought you know, now they can feel that they have, they will have a good future for their family, for their kids. It would have been an economic, a humanitarian, a shipping uh, disaster of, of huge magnitude that uh, I don't think the world really fully absorbed just how bad it could have been. The story isn't over, but the livelihoods of hundreds of thousands have been saved, alongside the irreplaceable marine life of the Red Sea. Thanks to the crew that remained, the local divers, and the Maryland school children.